Okay, folks, listen, I'm back at it again with another air fryer recipe. Now, listen, you guys seen the thumbnail. You done already read that title, so you know I'm doing another air fryer pork chop, right? But this time, we're going to do it, and we're going to do a little batter. We're going to do a little bit of a double dip. We're going to put that bread on the outside. It's going to be seasoned well, and it's going to be fire, folks. Let's get it. Okay, so look, come on in. Let's go ahead and take a look at the star, right? Now, I'm going to do something a little bit different than what I normally do. Listen, I have this fork right here, right? And these are going to be the chops. Right, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take these chops and I'm gonna just poke some holes in there because we want some seasoning and we want, you know, our buttermilk to like sink in. That's all we gonna want, right? So, let's just do this for both of them. All right, so after you put your holes in it, you know, you poke your holes and just think about that. You put some holes, you put some seasoning, the seasoning gets down into the white meat, right? So, let me go ahead and make some room and I'm gonna go ahead and start off by just taking my flour and I'm gonna just add it here. Right now, I don't you don't see no seasonings out here outside of this because this is what I'll be using. This is my A seasoning, you guys. Listen, this right here is fire. It go great with the poultry, you know, the the pork, all of that. You guys got to get some. You guys are like buying it. It's hard for me to keep up with it. I had sold out for like two days. Luckily, I got a shipment in. This right here is the way to go. Now, on my website, I will put an ingredient list in there for you guys to use some seasonings that'll get you right in the ballpark. Right. So now what we want to do is. We want to add some here. And then here's the key, folks. When you add a batter, whether you make a chicken, breaded uh, pork chops or anything like that, you want to see your seasoning in the inside. And even though I hit it with my seasoning right there, I'm going to add some fresh black cracked pepper to it. You know what I mean? And then I'm going to give it a whisk. And then we're going to look at the color. Because if it look good, it's going to be good, right? And then we're going to ensure how we're going to tap it. And we're going to taste it. I know that sounds crazy, folks, but you got to taste your flour. Okay, so look, even before I hit it with the whisk, you know what I mean? You know, my products are like low in sodium. All of the products that I develop are that way. So I just give it a pinch of salt. That's just to enhance the flavors, right? That's what salt should be for. You know what I mean? If anybody need any more, when they get theirs, let them fix it on their end. Look at that right there. That tells me, because you remember it was like bleach white. I put some seasoning there the first time, stirred, you know, whisked everything together and it didn't quite come out this color, right? So I made my, adju my adjustment. And I added a little bit more black pepper you know what I mean? But the key is, this is a low sodium product, right? So just a pinch of salt wakes it right up. And you gotta taste it, which I did. And when I tasted it, it tell me it's ready to go. So I'll just set this here, bring this over here in the plate. Now we're gonna put our buttermilk in. All right, so I'm happy with this. I love the results from this. I wish you guys could taste it. But remember, I'm gonna leave this here on the screen for you guys to see. We wanna end up with something like that. And I promise you folks, it might sound crazy to you about tasting your flour, but if your flour got a little bit of the seasoning in it, you know you're gonna have success, right? Now, these have already been patted dry. Remember, we done put the fork holes in it. You see that, you can see them right now, right? So I'm gonna keep it real simple, folks. I'm gonna go ahead and take my chop, put it in like that. I'm gonna flip this over. Now you see why I didn't have a whole lot of buttermilk, like really don't need it. Then we got the holes in there, right? Trust me, it's gonna get in there. You know what I mean? I can use my, I got some tongs right here, but I'm gonna be honest with you, when I'm cooking, I don't know how your parents and how they did it. Listen, they probably didn't even wear gloves because we were brought up in a different time. You know what I mean? All this stuff is like, uh, I hate to say it, it's new. You know what I mean? I've done a lot of things that I do now differently because I am on the internet, right? But so that I don't, you know, Keep up with my theme. I'm not finna over talk it. We're gonna let go ahead and drip dry like that. And then we're just gonna add this right there in there. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and dry my hand off. Now I'm gonna use my tongs. Cause I don't want the internet police to get on me and be like, man, your fingers and all that stuff is all uh, nasty and all of that. So look, we take it, bring it over here like this. It's okay. Cause I'm gonna let it adhere to it. You know what I mean? Don't forget, we put them holes in there. So believe me, it's gonna get up in there. You can take some, just put it on there. And if you wanna flip it again, you can. Now I'm gonna let this sit up just for a hot second. Right? Now I'm gonna shake this dry and let it sit up. And if those of you guys that wanna have like that, that double batter, we can do that too. So I'm gonna take it, lay it right here. Look at that right there. Right now, I know your mouth is probably watering just looking at that. Check it out. 
I'm gonna do something a little different. I could have did a double dip with just the uh, buttermilk, right? But I'm gonna go ahead and get you guys right, right? So what I'm gonna do is just take it, crack two eggs, and we're gonna double dip. And the second dip will be with the egg, right? Uh, you can do it all one way, but I really, really do like doing it, you know, flour, then the egg. All right, so, you know, the rest is like self-explanatory. Now you see, I just put a little dash of milk. Really what I'm doing is just making some stretch instead of using three eggs, right? Kind of like thins it out, that's all. So now, I'm gonna take the very first one that we did, take it, go ahead and just lay them down right here in the inside, right? Move them around so that all the edges can be done. Grab it, and then we flip. Look at that right there. Mm. AB, you a bad boy. Drip dry. And your last time flour. While we doing that, let's go ahead and get this guy. I feel like he got a little, a little something that can be shaken off. We take it, set him in here like that. And now we just make sure this is completely coated. And then what we're gonna do is just stage everything again. Let it sit up. And then we'll fire up the air fryer. Okay, so look, you can see, I let them sit up for a minute. You can see how they start to soak in the flour, right? And that's what they should look like. Now we're going to move to the uh, air fryer, right? So I'm going to take this out. Let me do it like this so you guys can see it. Now, just for the sake of me making this video, I'm just going to go ahead and do one right now. You know what I mean? So I'm going to take it. You guys can see it. It's on both. Give it a little bit more of a shake. Now, before I put this in there, you see those holes down there? The air fryer is going to like cook it on the bottom part too, right? So that's essential. So only when I'm doing pork chops, you know, and then when I do, uh, I can't say only, because when I do the wings too, I like to give them a flip, but it's still gonna get the air and it's gonna circulate. And that's by design of every, it should be of every one of these uh, air fryers, right? So I put it in there just like that. I got me some spray olive oil. I'm just gonna give it a light spray. That's it, right? Now I'm gonna stick this in here, right here. And we finna get a time going. So we power it up, right? Now over here, I'm gonna hit menu. This is how mine works, right? So when I hit the menu here, if I hit it again, you notice how it goes over. What I wanna do is go to that right there. It looked like a pork chop or that could be a steak. So look, that's really like a chop symbol. So we just put this over here. Now, when you see that 400 degrees, that's what you guys wanna have. And they saying this could take 25 minutes, right? So. At 12 or 13 minutes, I'm gonna open it up, look at it, and then I'm gonna flip it over, right? So, it's in there, now we just hit the start. And this is like super quiet. I love the Philips, you know, XL air fryer, you know what I mean? Uh, this is like my tool of choice. You know what I mean? I uh, really, really like this one right there. So I'll see you guys in 13 minutes. It's been 13 minutes. <clears throat> you can see it, see it starting to brown on that side right there. Now I'm gonna take it. All right, so now that we got it flipped, right? You can see it could just use just a little bit. Now, don't forget this is pork, right? We don't. We only wanna go to 145, right? So you wanna have yourself a meat thermometer. So I'm looking at it, and then this one little piece that I just showed you guys that was right here, I'm gonna go ahead and just spray that, right? Ah, oh, yeah. I can hear it, listen to this. That's the breading on it, folks. This right here is gonna be nice. So let me go ahead and put it back in and let it continue, you know, for the rest of its time. I don't have to push no buttons. Boom. All right, so listen, this one is done. I actually stopped it at three minutes earlier because I told you I want to get to 145, right? So let me just get under here like that. Ah, oh, yeah. And this is what you'll come up with. Now I'll just set it right here and you can look. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the second one. And again, I could have put both of them in here, but just for the sake of me making a video, I wanted to do it this way, right? So now I'm just gonna go ahead and add it right there in the middle, reset everything, and I'm taking mine out, you know, three minutes early.
Okay, folks, you guys just seen the way I did it. Listen, this time we did it breading. We did a breading on it, you know what I mean? Just like, it's like a fried chicken, right? So we got that on there, that like levels up to flavor. And don't forget, I just did a video a couple of weeks ago to show you guys how to make it just by just seasoning the chop and getting it just right. So listen, I'm not finna over talk it. We finna get right into going ahead and tasting this right here. So I'm, ooh man, it's nice and moist. Let's see. Yeah, here we go. I had hit some of that fat, but look at this right here. Remember, 145 is what you're looking for, right? You see that right there? Look, it's still juicy. Mm, mm, mm. Bread and still sticking. And one thing that I didn't show you guys, listen, when you take them out of here, you want to put them on a baking sheet, right? You know what I mean? A cooling rack, excuse me. You put it on a cooling rack, that way so some of the air can get underneath the bottom and it dries out the bottom since you had it sitting in the bottom of your air fryer, right? But with that, all that being said, it's a nice big man's bite right here. Cheers. <laughs> okay folks listen this right here is like just a hey, super tender and you know just like uh i don't even know how to say it listen and you know what i might be biased because listen i am a fan of the pork chop right i like that other meat that white meat and this is that meat right here so listen super easy to make this is really about me just showing you guys and giving you guys the courage and just taking the mystery out of it all you gotta do is set in this out of this for me i needed to look the best it did so that's why i did one by one i'm gonna be honest with you when i'm when the camera not rolling i throw a couple of these in here sometimes i do the boneless so i put three maybe even four in the inside of this right turn it on when it says ready is ready then i sit down with you know gotta have that kool-aid and i play my game now let me know what else would you serve with this right here obviously i got mixed vegetables the only thing missing to me is some uh mashed potatoes hey with that being said you know what to do don't forget to like smash that subscribe and tell everybody out there there's a channel out here to simplify these recipes and taking the mystery out of cooking i can almost barely talk and guess what folks i'm gonna move this out of my way i'm gonna grab this and you know what i'm finna do i'm out peace